Um, yeah, so there there has been a lot of issues um, regarding DVC and ML flow. So what we're going to do now is like everyone here, it, this is going to be a follow along tutorial. So um, we advise you to um, get your computers ready um, so that you can follow along every step and have um, at least a clear project of how uh, a group flow as well um, works using both tools, DVC and ML flow. Um, so I'm gonna start off. Uh, I think you can see my screen now. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start off with a with a new repository um, because we're starting from scratch. Uh, let's create a DVC ML flow. Uh, it doesn't need a it doesn't need a git ignore file, um, and let's create that repository. Right, so yeah, and anyone, every everyone else, just follow along. Create a create a GitHub repository as well, so that you can do everything that um, we show you over this tutorial. Right, um, yeah. So let's just clone this repo, um, and let me create a directory. Same directory. Uh, and. So now have an app to sync uh, repository with GitHub um, on, our, on our local setup, right? And let's just open VS Code and uh, start off. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is also create a virtual environment, right? Uh, where we're going to install all of our dependencies. So use Quanda if that's your preferred way to create a virtual environment. Okay, since till that opens, we can create the environment here. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, and let's activate it. Um, so we have now activated this virtual environment that we have. Um, let's create a git ignore file so we don't want to accidentally um, track this virtual environment. So it's untracked, and now we just have a virtual, a clean virtual environment where we're going to install all of the dependencies, right? Um, and so what we've seen over this past week is um, specific Python versions, specific DVC versions, specific ML flow versions are really colliding, and um, yeah, it's really not working, right? So uh, the virtual environment that I've created on that I've created now has a three point eight point ten. Python environment, and that's what we're gonna going to be thoroughly testing it on. Um, also, I believe we, we might check out other versions like three point ten um, while we go on, after we after we go on. Um, but yeah, um, if you can um, use this specific Python version when you create your virtual environment, so that everything is um, as consistent as possible. Um, okay, so. Um, I believe everyone has gotten to this step, right? And so, yeah, I'm gonna assume everyone is clear on the steps um, per till now. Um, yeah, so the thing that we've talked about is the dependency issues, right? So what we've done is gone around and already checked the, the specific dependencies and tried to resolve um, as many conflicts as possible. Um, and so we have a requirements.txt file, uh, which um, Yedidia is going to share over on the Slack channel. Um, and that is what we're going to be, those packages and those specific versions of those packages are what we're going to be using to install everything. Um, okay, so let me just copy that from CML. So CML, 
requirements.txt to PCM. So, so this requirements.txt file has um, everything that you, almost everything that you're going to use at least for this week, for this week's challenge. And that requirements.txt file will be shared for those that are having uh, dependency issues, right? So there is GVCG drive, because we're going to be using Google Drive as our remote, as we're going to see um, later on. Uh, yeah, and there are yeah specific versions um, of the files that are that more or less do not create a conflict or at least um, work on the setup that we have. So on the Python version that we have, Python 3.8.10, um, you can use any versions of 3.8, and it wouldn't it probably wouldn't cause any conflicts for those that are joining. Right. Um, so the requirements.txt file is shared. Um, and let's go on uh, to install the requirements.txt. Right. So we're installing the packages. Um, so you've gotten the requirements file, right? Can anyone confirm? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen it on Slack. Uh, Inside the CML .yaml. Okay, yeah. So CML is um, we might not be covering it today, but I think at the end we can uh, we can talk a little about that. Um, it's you. It's a bit on the advanced side, but we can definitely uh, share some resources and take a look at that. Mm. Marguerite, go on. Um, hi, I missed the beginning parts. Could you keep me updated with what you were saying for things? So I don't have will installed. Um, if some of you um, are, if you get an error, maybe saying, um, install wheel and if it's just not a warning um, you might have to do pip3 install wheel but that shouldn't be the case right like the setup.py uh, the installation process should be handled automatically um, so it should just be a warning and all of the packages should install um, inside of your virtual environment Uh, Azaria, Margaret asked you uh, to go back and just give a recap on what you've. Okay, so we have all of our packages and we check the DBC uh, version that we have. So we're going to go through the tutorial with DBC version 2.24.0. Um, make sure that is um, the DBC version that you have. Um, yeah, because it is specified in the requirements. Fine, this should be okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Kitia, I believe you did as already in the core, right? Okay. Uh, you can't hear us. Okay. Um, can't hear me? Or uh, uh, we, we can hear you, Azaria. Can you? Oh, I can't hear you guys. Okay. Okay. So you are muted. Uh, yeah, I think I I I muted this. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, my bad. There was a there was a question. Was from a Margaret. question. Margaret, can you okay. ask your question again? Um, I was just saying that if you could recap what you already said from the beginning for us to join late. Yeah. Um, not a problem. How so you so. get to? Yeah. Um, yeah, so what we did was just we created an empty GitHub repository um, and we created a virtual environment. I was I'm using the Python CVMV um, to create the virtual environment, but you can use Conda um, if that's your preferred environment. And um, yeah, we've just created a virtual environment uh, to install every package. And we've already shared this requirements.txt um, with all the dependency issues that are resolved. 
um, and I've just installed the requirements.txt using pip install. That's just that's it. Um, yeah. So um, where uh, have you shared the the file? Um, I believe over on the Slack channel. Uh, uh, it, it's been shared on all week three channel, Margaret. Yeah. You can find it. Um, okay. So now let's get to the PVC part of our project, right? So yeah, we've when we created the repository on GitHub, we already initialized uh, Git. So um, all we have to do now is do a DVC in it because we want to initialize our uh, DVC projects, right? Um, and so we do DVC in it and we get this dot DVC folder which has the specific configuration for a DVC, right? And this DVC in it automatically adds um, some of the files to the staging directory, um, which we're going to track using Git. Right, um, and so they're already in the staging. So uh, this is a feature which sets up DBC. Uh, so uh, we've committed the .dbc file, and so we've initialized our DBC repository. Um, so I believe no one has no one is facing any issues. Issues, or is there anyone facing? Um, problems while installing DBC for those that are following along. So that we can either take a pause or, okay, so I'll take that as everything is going well. Um, yeah, so DBC is tracked and now we want to create a remote on Google Drive, which is going to be housing all of the data, right? Uh, Okay, so let's go here and and create a new folder that is going to house our data, right? So let's call this GPCML flow. I don't think it's taken. Is it taken? Yeah, so we've created this folder on Google Drive, which is going to be where our data is going to be stored, right? So just like when you're collaborating in, the te on, in a team, um, people actually use GitHub as a centralized repository. Um, you're going to use this as a centralized repository where you're going to be storing your data, um, right? And so this, this is the ID of this is the ID of this specific folder that you've created, and that is what we're going to be using to set the remote. And how we do that is by using the DVC remote command. Uh, we we're adding a remote, and we want this new remote to be the default remote um, that we set. Right. So let's give it a remote name, um, my remote, and um, you specify that it's. Uh, Google Drive um, file system, uh, and you then specify the ID, right? So the VC remote add, um, set it as a default remote. If you give your remote name, in my case, uh, in this case, my remote, um, and then you specify that um, that folder ID that we copied from Google Drive. And so it's it has set uh, my remote as a default remote. And if you go here and see the config, um, you'll you'll see that it is set to Google Drive. So, yeah, one of the best practices, especially when you're working on a huge project and you make changes that are maybe going to affect something later on, you want to track them, right? So, if we do a git status again, we see that the .dvc config has been changed, like we saw here, because we now have a remote, right? So let's um, add that uh, dot dvc slash config um, 
and now it's in our staging directory and then let's just commit so that we know what this specific chain that we've made is doing right um, so it sets the dbc remote so what you've done is you've now set your dbc remote to be google drive right so everything is good up until now as well right feel free to stop me anytime or feel free feel free to um, ask for a pause so that maybe either your installation process can go to um, or anything okay so we've set the dvc remote and now we want to get some data that we're going to push to that remote track make some changes and um, really see what the use of DVC is, right? Um, so let's make a directory called data. Um, and I believe this is the this is the folder with all the data. So let's just copy uh, Roseman cells everything in here um, into the Git repo, which is DVC and flow. Uh, and um, into the data folder, right? The new folder that we created. So now we have this data, right? This are the this is the data that we want to be saved in Google Drive, right? We don't want to copy this into a flash drive and give it to someone else or do this do this cumbersome process of sharing this data, and we want to. We want everything here to to be tracked, right? Um, so what we do is we want DVC to track it, right? So we add it by using the DVC add command. Um, so DVC add uh, and let's add a file which ends in .cs, right? You might have uh, maybe multiple files, which uh, or you can track everything in this case, but that is just what we're doing, right? So with We've now we now have this .csv .dvc file which contains the hashes for the data that we, and this this dot .dvc file is what is going to be um, the core component that is going to be tracking um, the specific versions that you have um, and the specific data that you're tracking, right? So even right after when you do a DVC add, uh, it tells you what the next step is, and so the next step is to Add those two DVC files into um, into your Git staging, right? So to track the changes with Git, it tells you to do this. So we're just gonna follow what DVC is doing, and we are now, and all those two DVC files are now um, are now tracked using Git, right? Um, and so let us commit uh, data. Uh, tax raw initial data, right? That is what it's doing. There is no change that we've made thus far. So now everything, um, everything is committed, right? Every dot DVC file um, is committed, and so this is this is technically the 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 major process of DVC, right? So DVC and Git work side by side to give you this power. Um, but at this moment, still our data is here, right? And if you go here, the only way you can version this is if you, you see the comments, we can see that this specific comment um, is actually where the initial raw data is tracked. And so where those two DVC files were actually, uh, actually where the starting of um, Git looking at those two DVC files, right? But using the commit hash is a bit cum a bit cumbersome process, uh, so that is why uh, Git tagging is uh, relevant. So we do that. What Git tagging? We've seen what Git tagging does, uh, but like let's just give it a version um, so that we don't have to use this uh, this cryptic figure and give specific names for for the data that we're tracking, right? And so let's give it a message where it's raw data. And so if we do a git log now, we see that this specific commit uh, is actually tagged. Uh, 
Um, okay, so now we still have all of our data here, but what we want to do is we want to have the data here, right? And this shared repository, having it just on my local computer does not make sense. So what I do is, is I do a DVC push. Um, so this DVC push is then supposed to take those files which have, uh, which have those, yeah, those files of .dvc. So I've already given um, Google Drive access to uh, Google Drive already permission. So I believe that's why it's not asking me for any authorization. Um, but yeah, when you do a, deep dot, a .dvc push, it should open. So it should either open a new tab which asks for authorization, um, asking you to give permissions to, to DVC, right? So DVC needs permission to read and write to your Google Drive. Uh, if it does not have access, it won't be able to do that. Um, and so if I, I think also a couple of people were facing problems here um, when doing DVC push. And so, um, yeah, when you do a DVC push, um, if you've done a DVC push and you're facing problems, let me know so that we can, uh, we can resolve those. Uh, if not, we can go along. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, Patrick. Hi. No, hello. So, um, I have this question when I tried to push, um, it first asked me to, ask me to authorize it on, uh, on the browser, then uh, for So is it just me or I can't I can't hear you, Patrick? Um, um we can, can we can't can, can you hear can you hear me? Yeah, uh you're back now. Yeah, I'm back now. So uh it's uh, it's late uh it's late an I don't know if I can can I share my screen? Yeah, yeah of course. Um share your screen. I don't know, I have, a, I, have an, uh, I have an internet issue, but so, yeah. yeah, so if you've checked um, all authorization boxes, um, just like mentioned on the chat, um, it should be fine. Um, so can you can you see my my screen? Yeah, it's it's coming up now. So, so I uh, probably that's where the the pro uh, the the problem came uh, came up because I I I I checked the last one I didn't check both for the first time so when I tried to do it again that's where ah. that's where it started um, blazing this year so I don't know how how to fix it I tried to Google I didn't okay. get anything um so okay. If you face the same issue and you're trying to help with an answer, or is it another question? So come again. Okay. Um. No. Uh. I think. Okay. So uh, have you tried deleting the .dvc cache? Um. So there are two. If you haven't um tracked anything so, inside uh, of the .dvc oh. folder. Um, so I I deleted all this DVC folder. There are two uh, files. Did it? Did it? Yeah. Uh, which one? Like this one DVC? No. Um. No. 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 The dot DVC. Dot DVC. The one above. Yeah. So. 
Um, I, I deleted all the DVC, so I started again. Yeah, still uh -huh. uh, keep raising this. Uh, okay, so after, when requesting, I did not found error. Um, hmm. So, you, like, you've started everything from scratch at the, right at this moment, or? No, no, like, uh, like yesterday. Um, okay, so I think, like, since nothing is actually tracked, delete the entire .dvc folder. Um, and, like, delete the .dvc ignore file as well, um, and just initialize the .dvc repository from, st from scratch. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a DVC reinitialize or something. Uh, maybe is the ID that you provide from Google Drive uh, correct or? Sorry? Yeah, is the ID that you provided as a, at the remote of your, uh, when you're working locally, is the ID of the Google Drive correct? Yeah, this one is correct. You, you, mean, you mean this one? Uh, yes, the ID that you provided for your remote. Maybe you can list out your remote for the DVC. In so I even uh, I even deleted um, a folder that I I used uh, for the first time. Then I did it again. Uh, I created another one that generated this one. So I don't know. Probably uh, I was thinking because uh, I use uh, I used two OS. So I was thinking to go back to Windows and try it there. Like, come again so i will uh, i will block you maybe i will send you a message on slack hello yeah so yeah definitely um if it's if it's not being tracked and if you're facing issues that deleting the cache um deleting specific types of the .dvc don't work, um, yeah, maybe try reinitializing it so, yeah, the permissions are properly set. Um, is, that, is that what we're doing? I, I, I don't know if I missed something. So, I did, uh, didn't get your call. Um, you did get, I, I believe you were saying something, right? Well, what did I miss? Uh, yeah, yes, I think uh, just for now, try to delete the cache in the same as Azaria said. Uh, if that's not all, also working, uh, try to follow uh, from the start. Try to initialize a new project and just add the data from your current challenge project and try to start it from scratch and follow the exact same step that Azaria is uh, going through. And yeah, there are definitely lots of places where things can go wrong. Um, so yeah, just try to follow along. Um, Jose? Yeah, uh, yeah, my problem is actually with my the, my drive. I think the first time when I was trying to authorize the DVC from G drive, I failed checking all the buses. So when uh, I did push, uh, it said that uh, the token has expired or revoked. So uh, what I did finally to fix the DVC, the, the DVC push was to try to create a new app on, on Google Cloud. It's another way to connect DVC with G Drive. So when I did it, I was able to access my G Drive and I can push. But now the, my issue with that is that is when I tr I'm trying to access the data in, in the G drive. And it's like the error which is coming is uh, the uh, is similar to the one when I failed the first time authorizing PVC from my G drive. So I looked a little bit on the internet and uh, what I saw is that it might be, I think, possible it might be possible to refresh the authorize uh, the the token. So I don't know how to do that. So my problem is especially with that. Hmm. 
Hello, I can hear. I can hear you. Yeah, um, we we lost you for for a moment there. Um, yeah, we okay. can hear you now. Okay, okay. So I said that uh, the first time when I I was trying to authorize my the, the connection between my T TVC and G drive, I failed checking all the buses. So yeah. when when I tried to push the DVC. I, I've got an error. The error was a, was, was saying that uh, the token has expired or revoked, something like that. So I looked for another way to connect them, and I found that I can create an app on on Google Cloud. I did that, and finally I was able to access the G drive and push my data. Now the problem is when I'm trying to access the data in my my drive. And the error is almost a bit similar to the previous one. So I looked for a way to solve that kind of error. And I found that it might be possible to refresh the token when to authorize TVC from the drive. So I don't know how to do that. And it's like the new app that uh, I have created on Google Cloud is not able to, uh, I can't, I don't know how to use that to access it in G drive so that is in summary my problem yeah so we're we're seeing that also a couple of people actually face those problems um Misak is facing the same problem Brahanus facing the same problem yeah so i don't think uh at least from my end that hasn't happened uh so the token did not have to be resolved okay Brahanu, um, i think that's no i face uh, the problem that uh talking up about uh, Patrick uh, said but I try many times but when I change the email it's work properly now I used in using another email yeah yeah uh, definitely um, it would be using a new email it would be like using an to authorize a new Google Drive right so yeah that makes that, that would that would definitely be the fastest way around this um because it does seem like a lot of people are facing that issue and that it shouldn't be time that it should be time that you should then experiment in the ML model, um, and so on right yeah sure um, that solved by changing it yeah yeah, so I, I guess I, I think Josias um, and Isaac, you can do this. You can do that for now, um, as a as an easier workaround. Um, yeah, but we can definitely try and look into um, how to refresh that access token, and that might that might also be the case for what's causing Josias's problem later down the line. Um, yeah, so thank you, Brahan. I think you can do that. We're still on tracking the version one of our data stage, right? Yes, yes, no. Uh, yeah, Gideon? Sorry, I had a question. Uh, can we set up DVC remote on our local machine? Yes, yes, you can do that. Um, you can set any um, file storage system to be remote, but it would definitely make it hard to when you're collaborating. Uh, but for this project, since we're not collaborating, I, I, I can just set up on my local computer, the repository, the remote repository. Yeah, of course you can do that. Um, OK, thank you. There, there will be, yeah, there will be projects where you will be collaborating as a team as well. So it would be nice to see how the Google Drive really interacts. Um, OK, so I think let me share my screen again. Uh, uh. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Adara. So, just ask, did it work for you? Yeah, yes, uh, I tried the okay. local remote and it worked for me. The local? Oh, okay. Yes, the local one. Okay, try to update us on the Google Drive as well, maybe later. Yes, I will try the Google Drive because I don't want to waste time anymore. For this yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah. I think so. We've already tracked our version. I think we can add the requirements as well. Uh, let 
and um, and I'd push it. So I think when we pushed the remote, I'm not sure if we saw it properly. Yeah. So this DVC ML flow now has the hashes of what uh, we have. You right? haven't shown so, the screen. So what I've done is just added the requirements and just pushed uh, pushed to GitHub, right? Where our code is where our code is hosted. But this is now the centralized the centralized repository of our of our data, right? So yeah, we have those specific hashes. Uh, this one is starts with fifty nine. So this would host the data that is being tracked here, right? So the sample submission .csv, this file, this file would be this file, right? We can download it and take a look at it. Yeah, so it just includes the, it just includes that file. So it, it is stored um, inside of that remote. Uh, yeah, so that is just the flow of one side where we have just an initial tracked version um, right here for the tag to properly identify it. And then we have it hosted on our uh, code repository. If I can find it, okay. Uh, is this it or, yeah. So if you check this DVC ML flow, um, it has all of those two DVC files that uh, that have information about the about the remote, right? So when you're working on a team, you'd add someone as a collaborator. Right now, I'm going to add the DDA as collaborator so that you can see um, what the flow of the other person is, how they how they get access to the files, um, and so on, right? So, uh, yeah, so. Okay, so I've added EDA to this repository, so he now has access to my GitHub repo, but also I would need to give him access to this repository because otherwise, like just like DVC can't read and write um, from your Google Drive if you do not give it the proper the proper permissions that are required, um, he he also won't have any access to read and write this to read and write from this centralized repository where our data is stored, right? So I need to add him. Uh, I need to add his email. This this one, right? Ah uh, yes. Okay. So, and now I've shared this repository. So just like you share your GitHub repository, you share your data repository, which in our case is Google Drive. And so when you're collaborating, um, that's why having a remote repository is good. Um, and so he'll pull that data, do some transformations, and um, we'll then go on to see how uh, how some of the issues that you were having, I believe, on the stand-up that we had uh, before yesterday and see how we can go through. So I think you, you can, can take over after this. Uh, I'll stop sharing it. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, uh, I have also created a, uh, I'm using a Conda environment. Uh, you can use the virtual environment or a Conda environment. I've already activated that. So, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going uh, to pull the PVC from the remote branch. Okay, so since I've already activated that, uh, it's not asking me for uh, it's, it's not asking me to authorize again. Okay, so so now I have uh, pulled the data, and the data you can find the data under the data directory. The, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to do uh, a minor transformation. Okay, 
uh, I'm using Python 3.18, but uh, I think you guys are already using Python 3.8. That should uh, work as well. I'm going to import funds in the next thing was the, the next thing is to import uh, DBC. I'm just going to copy a course section. Uh, Azaria, can you send me the report? Yeah, okay, sorry about that. Uh, I think I can send you a snippet. Uh... So I've, I've sent it on in the chat to so yeah just, just okay. Okay. uh can you also send me your before you are um, okay. Uh, so I sent you that. Um, yeah, and the version. Version if you want. So, um, yeah, we have the pause. The pause is where our data uh, is in, and the repo is the remote GitHub repo in the version. It's just a tag, but you can also use the commit to track it by different by the different commits that we uh, commit when working with this Git. Unknown revision if you want. Yeah, uh, okay. If you want, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um I, and I think a good uh sorry about that, but a good uh a good area that we have. Yeah. You can use that. Um so when you do a git push, um it, it actually doesn't push the tags. Uh so you'd have to push the tags individually. Uh so you idea you can use the commit hash for now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, my back, uh, git push tags, which I think control the tags. Okay. So this is the commit that Azara used when committing the changes and this is already pushed to GitHub. So what DPZ tries to do is it will first locate the repo, part, the repo and uh, pull this specific data on this, pull the data that's specific to this commit ID. So we are also trying to track uh, our data by using the different commit IDs. So the job is completed now. Now if I run the next cell, uh, and that's just PD. Yes. So, uh, we can now see that I have pulled the data. I haven't used GVC pool or uh, any other, I haven't even added the data directly to my uh, data directory. This specific code section is what's pulling the data from the Google Drive and we can work on it. And when we are collaborating with others, uh, we can share SM, the SM repository like Google Drive and we can work on the data. So I'm just going to, uh, do a minor transformation. Let me also pull, uh, maybe, yes, I can. If I'm just going to select, I'm just going to, uh, I'm 
I would select the top 20 euros and the new data uh, uh, only has about 100 euros and I'm going to set this to CSV. Data and let me just call this new chain dot CSV. Okay. System tree data. Yeah, just back up one directory. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I can now see that the new data is in the data directory. Uh, what I can then do is I will add the data, my new data to uh, by using BBC, BBC add data new string dot csv. I've added that and I can also add the dot bbc files and I will commit version in data and I can do a bbc push. And finally, a git push because Azar is going to use the commit ID to put the new data. Git push for it. Azar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so you've you've pushed to uh, Git. Yes. Very new version, right? Okay. Yes. Um, Um, yeah, so he's he has made changes which uh, we don't have at the moment, right? So we're on the same branch and let me synchronize the changes, right? So I only get this .dvc file and, um, okay, so the notebooks are not there, right? Oh, okay, sorry, I haven't pushed, I haven't added the notebook. Okay. Yeah. So let's take a look at the logs, right? So version train data. So this this one would now um, give us a specific version of that data, right? We can check out. Um, we can also even check out a specific file, right? We can, if, for example, um, you have this store.csv.dvc file um, here over this time period, if it if it's tracking, um, if it is if it is at some specific version um, over here on this, if we're thinking of the commits as different time periods, over here it could be tracking some other version of that data, right? So over on our Google Drive, we'd have this um, specific hashes that would, um, specific file folders for each of the historical time period that we're talking about. Um, so that is, uh, so you can go to our notebook uh, and over on the analysis, um, we can see that the files that was checked out is over this version, right? Uh, it is over this, so over what I actually sent him. And so we want this new train data, and let's say we're going to use this new training set to train our machine learning model, right? So let me connect to the proper environment. Uh, I don't think I have IPy kernel installed. Okay. So yeah. Um, so this 
the one of the issues that we're actually also faced was what does this have to be right this repo um, are you specifying your local repository or the repository that's on github so if there are many people going around and making lots of changes you can specify the github remote so every time um, your data will be synchronized with the remote that is in github but um, that takes time because DVC does uh, behind it, it actually clones that repository to get all of the information that it requires. So um, using the dot dot behind, dot dot slash to go back to the get initialized repo that you have locally would also work. So this, this and that would be the same and should not have any difference. Okay, so we import DVC API, and so um, right the the data that I want, like right here, when I when I sent the flow to Didia, um, this new train dot uh, CSV file did not exist, right? But let's say that is what I want. So I want to get the new underscore train data um, over on. Okay, let's. Specify the local repository. So let's specify the local repository. And over that version, let's go on to try and get this data, right? And so this, this should not work. Because I, I don't think there was a new train, right? Or is it actually trying to get it? Yeah. OK, so this errors out um, because it says file not found. It can't find the data new train.csv because it was it was never tracked over this historic, historical period, right? Over this snapshot, we do not have a new train.csv. So what we want to do is we want to go over, we want to go to, we want to walk to the time period where we have um, we have the file tracked, right? Over on this period, we have it tracked. Over on this period, we have it tracked. So let's just take the final one um, and um, yeah. So I guess this should work. It should go on to look at um, the local files that exist here look at the CSV files, it should realize that it doesn't have a .csv file, it doesn't have a new train .csv, but go to Google Drive, actually fetch that data so that we can use it, right? And so if you go over here, you you get the new data that you did actually specified. Um, yeah, and so that, that would be the case of what you would do. So definitely if, if you have a remote where you've really not properly tracked uh, the git commit and the git data. That's a question. Yeah, uh, yeah, go on, Kisa. Um, uh, could you come back to how you collected the, the error? Okay. Um, yeah, so. Git and DVC, I think let me uh, maximize my screen. Okay, so Git and DVC are working side by side here, right? Um, so when I when I sent the data to Edidia, I did not have a new train.csv file. It did not exist. He, he actually made that. So if you're thinking of your Git commits as um, historical snapshots, um, over the period that this was specified, if I undo this, so over this period, over this specified commit, that file did not exist. So it can't find it either locally or it can't find it over on Google Drive where the data is stored. So I would have to go into the history where a specific version, where this specific version that you're specifying, this might be a tag, or a commit actually has this data, either locally or over on that remote. Um, if the, I, I, is it does that is that clear or did I did I just confuse you more? 
Yeah. It didn't work. <laughs> okay, so I think, okay, let me uh, recap that. Um, let me, let's, let's zoom in here and see the, the get on properly right so this this is the most recent time that we're at right this is right now this is what get is seeing this is right now but there is also previous time steps like previous times where you can actually go back right so what you did did when he made this new train.csv file was actually added over on this time period so if i tried to get that data over on this time period, I would get that error saying that the file is not found. But if I go over this period or over this period, I'd, I'd get the data. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so we get that specific data. Um, yeah, and like that, this movement of uh, different explorations, this movement of different tracking really becomes cumbersome to track. Uh, yeah, I'm doing it. Uh, so basically, uh, he cre Udidia created a new file instead of like modifying the previous one. So like you're trying to get that uh, newly made file in a specific uh, commit, right? But yes. if he were to uh, update the previous file, you can uh, tap into that uh, through the, I mean, through similar process, but instead of like referencing the different file name, you use the same file name, right? And yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and just this, this yeah. Um, yeah, so you'd use the exact time frame, and the you'd get those different versions using this, using either the tag or the commit. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mohammed. Uh, I I won't. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, yes, uh, we can hear Mohammed. So um, I'm facing a problem where. Uh, where I'm working with my VS Code and uh, Google Code app. So sometimes my my device, my hardware device, um, cannot afford that uh, that high uh, performance uh, to do machine learning or deep learning algorithms. So uh, in that specific problem, I go to Code App so I could perform my my models and deploy it. So uh, when I'm, I'm uh, transferring between Colab and VS Code, um, let's say that I committed and pushed uh, all the updates that I have in, uh, in my VS Code or in my local device to Git. And from, from, uh, from, uh, from Git, I got all the uh, updates into Colab. So I'm facing the problem that uh, when I'm ad updating and pushing the codes or the DVC uh, from Colab. So, uh, yes, that, that, that was my problem. Um, yeah, so what you're talking about is really a complicated MLOps pipeline, right? Um, so mm, the things that you've mentioned really depend on a lot of factors, like um, Google Colab allowing, allowing you to do that specific operation. Um, right, and also, um, if Google Colab doesn't even allow um, allow you to check out into those specific versions that are stored over your remote, um, that flow becomes impossible or very difficult to implement. Um, and so, especially over on the free tier, I believe, like there are limited versions. I'm not sure. Someone was also mentioned this, but. Um, yeah, that would really definitely be a complicated pipeline. And for now, what we would advise um, is to is to either to train your model um, using a specific data that you know. Since your remote is already on Google Drive, you can just um, attach that 
and um, manually see the data that you actually want to use for your training. Um, and you could do all of the DVC tracking um, and all of the ML flow stuff that um, all of the parameter logging and not not all, but most of the stuff that you're doing, you can do that locally and you can switch between those. But yeah, definitely when it's production, you'd have to, you, you, it would, you'd have to integrate um, databases into ML flow. Um, you'd have to separate your notebook. And so it is really nice that you are thinking of that pipeline, but it will definitely be very hard to implement without the proper resources. Um, but it is definitely something really good to look out into. And if someone else has actually um, implemented it, yeah, definitely we talk about it. But I don't think it would be um, something easy to do in a couple of days. Um, so you recommend that uh, I, I stay on my local device and do uh, do the projects or do the programming? Um, Yes, like you do your model training on Colab, but um, yeah, really having this uh, streamlined. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so yeah, but that that is just the steps that we follow here, um, and over on ML Flow, like. Yeah, to really track um, specific very specific things that you're um, doing with your data, uh, you'd pro you'd need ML flow because you're you're going to be changing your data a lot and doing lots of transformations over that, right? So um, if we go to ML flow, getting started, We go over the quick start. Just we're going to see how to log a couple of the parameters that we saw. So um, yeah, MLflow has uh, the log params, uh, log artifacts, and the log metrics that you probably looked into and can look uh, more into. Uh, but we're just going to be um, using the log param to track some of the versions, right? So if we're, let's say we're training our model and uh, just like Andinet mentioned, we wanted to use multiple versions of the new train file, right? So if Edidia had sent me a new train file, which was on another point in time, which either was on this point in time or on this point in time. So we'd want to see which version that we're tracking, right? So let's just track three of this. So the pass, the repo, and the version. Um, so what we do is we can just call the log param, uh, log param, uh, version, uh, log param has, uh, was, what was the pass mentioning? Was it the repo or, okay, yeah. So the pass would give us the file name and the version. So both just logging goals would be enough, right? So let's log the parameters using MLflow uh, and so I actually did not give it a name. Um, you'd usually for the experiments that you were uh, that you actually do, you'd use the set experiment to give it a name. Uh, so let's see this is the DVC MLflow tutorial. Right. So you give it a name. Uh, and it actually tracks it, right? So we have not specified uh, it to store our, M our machine learning runs. So this is where MLflow is doing all of its magic. So we go into the notebook to launch MLflow UI and see um, and see the experiments in action. So we've already included on the script that Yudhya shared, um, the MLflow should be included, yeah. There is a specific version that is set to work, but over when you go over on the MLflow UI, you would see those um, experiment, and you would be able to track the specific versions of your data that was used for each of the experiment. So you would not only just log the data if you are making models; you would log the model itself as well, 
we would log any outputs that are generated. Um, yeah, and you'd go on to really log everything so uh, you get to, to get to see everything. So, over on the DVCM flow, zero matching runs. So the log params, um, was there anything that I've missed that I did not? So is it being tracked over on the default or? Yeah, okay, so it's storing it as a default and we have those parameters where the data new train dot CSV, um, where we saved the specific version and where we actually saved the pass, right? Um, yeah, so over on that, over on the default, we have that. I'm not completely sure of why this BBCML flow tutorial is not coming up, um, Eugenia, or anyone who do I have to, do I have to Maybe uh, you say the experiment name after you run the, Specific sale of the I mean the notebook, I guess. That might be the case. Ah uh like this run actually happened later too, but so uh, so using the log pram uh, the imports did not exist there. Um so our ML flow is running. Okay, nothing as well. It's logging it over over on the default, or this this is not logging it as well. Um, I believe I had a notebook that had uh, that had this um, working. So let me open that. Do you see ML CML? I believe I have too many things open, so it's a bit slow. So, but yeah, that, that's the general flow. I think if anyone has questions or had faced issues over on the DVC side, uh, we can uh, debug those um, before we check this out. Um, okay, so over an ML flow side. Uh, okay, so is it, aha, oh, okay. So I, I just got, I think what Andy meant, yeah. Uh, so from, we can just import the ML flow. We really don't need all of this ML flow. Uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, Sorry for my misunderstanding. Uh, MFLU.log param should log the entire thing. And yeah, the import statement was the one thing the specific issues. Um, yeah, so if we 
if we go over the DVCM metro tutorial experiment that we run, the new logged parameters should be there. What? Still little saving it over on the default way. Log the columns as well. DVCML flow does not exist. Should have created a new experiment and the logs should be there. And again, it's not. Uh, yeah, but this this is again just the flow that you follow. Maybe restart the notebook. Um, so we're again facing some issues over at the MFO side, but at least things should be clear over on BBC. Um, and so does anyone have any questions or those who are following along um, have having any problems, they can share it now so that uh, so that we can yeah, we can see those as well. Uh, let's, let's have this here. Easy and flow. So yeah, there can be multiple like caching problems as well. Um, but this this should not have this should not have been a problem at this moment. Um, import ML flow pass is not defined. So let's just, so we already know what they are. So this is version one of our data. Um, and we would then go on to use ML for UI to see how our ML flow is working. Already the previous application working. So if you don't properly terminate it, um, it would cause a couple of issues. But it should we should now get the ML flow UI back up and the more the ML runs should actually exist uh, over on this. Yeah, okay, so over on 16.11. Okay, so I might just be the time that it's lagging because my computer is slow as well because this run was actually on the 16s or it might also be, okay, yeah. it's the new run. Um, yeah, so definitely make sure to restart your notebooks um, if you already have um, other import errors as well. But everything that you log um, over on the new parameters, your new data um, specific versions should be there. Um, yes, Andy. Uh, can you go back to the VS Code, please? It's this one right here. Yeah, uh, here when you use uh, the ML flow log params uh, and stuff like that, uh, you Previously, you reference you reference the path in the version uh, just by calling the variable defined up there. Now yeah. uh, you put it in a quotation. Uh, is that the case? It works right now, or uh, no, no. can we do the, like That's the previous the one? Work, work. Yeah, yeah, the previous one should should definitely work. 
Um, that was just to save time, but let's rerun it and see, actually. So let's we have this data for the data frame. And so the pass and version rate. Right? This is what we want to track. So they're exact, they're technically just strings as well, right here. So it shouldn't make much of a difference specifying that, but when, when you have um, things that are changing automatically, then uh, yeah, you should definitely use variables. Uh, yeah, yeah, if we use the quotation, it means like we're using, uh, we're not, I mean, we're, we're using the string instead of like, referencing the variable. That was my question, like. Uh, so should we like wrap our uh, variables in the quotation in order for it to work? Now it doesn't seem working. Yeah, uh, okay. So that's definitely a good catch. Uh, so did you find a work a, a work around it or like did it start working with um, double quotations. I know I haven't uh, find a workaround. Um, so maybe the fact that I used single quotes. Uh, and that's not okay. So like maybe the use of F strings. And okay, so yeah, this should not have been the case. What were we using to specify the paths here? Uh, the paths and the version were simply strings. Mm. Okay, so yeah, uh, I think let me get back to that. Uh, yeah, but it should it should have worked. Um, probably, oh yeah. Um, definitely some string formatting uh, that's going on, but I think let me get back to you on that. Sure, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so anyone, okay, so changing param values is not allowed. Param was key, was already, okay, so which will create a new nested run. Okay, so I think it, if we change the, has new, it might be the fact that we already have params over on that, or the experiment that we run before did not actually have that specific parameter, right? So if you see now this new ML flow experiment, yeah, so the previous experiment and this new experiment runs um, actually have different formatting, and so that wasn't allowed, right? So if you go over and to, on to the, okay, so it's not tracking this one as well again. Hmm. No runs yet. Um, I think, okay, let me get back to you on that. But this logging should have been, should have just logged the, the pass and the version as a string. I think if it's maybe slow, yeah, no runs yet. Yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Um, it will change after another experiment. Try ML for UI again. Okay. So, yeah, those so. I think the initial problem where it was not tracking it was because the experiments were different. Um, okay, now let's see if the new run of the MFWI actually has fixed this.
yeah, the runs are not getting tracked here for some reason. Um, yeah, we'll see that uh, again. Uh, yeah, could you push the notebooks for reference? Yeah, I think we can share the zip file. Trying MFU UI again works for me. Okay, so it, it is working for a couple of people. I don't know why it's not working here, but this flow should generally work. Um, but if it doesn't, we can debug that again. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions, I might have to jump into another call soon, but um, please do stay on the call uh, and chat around and uh, try and resolve most of the issues that you're facing. Um, I will not end the call here, so um, I'll just stop the recording and people can please stay and help each other debug some of the problems. Yeah, so.